Hi, welcome to an Arduino step-by-step -step course by RoboJax. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use the MELES or millisecond in Arduino programming. So what is MELES and why we have to use it? First, MELES is an internal function from Arduino that calculates the time in millisecond from the starting point when Arduino program runs. As soon as you power up the Arduino, the MELES will start with zero and it goes up in millisecond. For one second, you will read 1,000, and for five seconds, you will read 5,000, and so forth. But it can be accessed throughout the code at any point. For example, you can record a start of a point and then st stop of a point. At any moment, for example, let's say somebody press a push button or temperature increases or something is detected, you can say, I'm counting from this point until some other event happens or until you want it. For example, a push button is pressed and in five seconds you want to do something. From the time the push button is pressed, you can save the MLS in a variable and then you can check it continuously until you see when it is 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds, then you can take an action. Many times people will need to use delay, uh, the function delay with 5,000 milliseconds and it will be five seconds delay. But the problem with the delay is that it will halt all program. Everything that you have, everything will be waited until the delay passes, then they will continue. But with MELES, it will not interfere with any other features that you have and you can calculate the time and the rest of the program or components that are connected to Arduino, they all function normally. Now let me show you practically on Arduino. And here I've defined the serial monitor with 9600 baht so it can display the value on the screen for me and this is just a text and I'm waiting for two seconds here using the delay. To use MELIS, we type MELIS M-I-L-L-I-S and open and close parenthesis. This means it's a function with an Arduino. But this is just a value at the moment that Arduino starts and it will increment every millisecond. Now let me print it for you first. I've written this code like this using serial print ln. Print ln means new line, so it will print the milles value and will create a new line. The speed of uh, how fast this is printed it now depends on serial monitor because it has to read the value from Arduino and bring it back on the screen. For that reason, this will delay it, but we will see some value. I, and I did not put any delay here, so you will cons constantly see the values. And I'm going to stop it so we can review it. I'm opening the serial monitor from here, but you can click on Tools, Serial Monitor, or you can use the Control Shift and M to open it. This is two seconds, and that's it. It will uh, start automatically. Let me stop it, and here, as you can see, the scroll bar is going crazy. It's continuously printing. Let's see here. Automatically, it was two seconds here, remember? I put that two seconds delay, the program starts running, and after two seconds it prints 1999 because zero is also millisecond. The first millisecond is zero and then one and two. And after that it prints it very quickly because the serial monitor prints it uh, very fast and slowly you see here eight and this has been printed a little late, four millisecond late, late and then from four and this is a longer and from here to here, six milliseconds. So, so you got the idea that this is the time from the beginning. Now it's 52 seconds, and it continuously will print. If I leave the scroll on, you will see that it's 60 seconds, one minute. So continuously it prints the value. You got the idea. The value for the minutes is unsigned long. That's very important because if you try to compare it with an integer, you will get error according to the Arduino website. 
So I'm defining an event. Let's say you want to take some action after five seconds. We are defining it as a type long, and we put unsigned, which means it doesn't have negative or positive, so it has no sign. Unsigned long event, this is our variable, and the value for that is 5,000, 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. And here we check from the start it as zero, and it increases until it, it reaches equal or greater than event, if it is five bigger than 5,000, this will be printed. And let me open. And as you can see, these are milliseconds, one second, two. And as you can see, it shows event occurred. I'm disconnecting it from USB. And let's see at 5,000. 4,995, and hey, this occurred when it was 5,000, and as you can see, next is 5,016, and forever it will be. So this is one way that you can remember, and the beauty of this one is that you can do any other tasks that are within the loop, they will continuously operate, and this will not interfere with them, and yet you can detect the time. If we do not use the millis, then uh, our option would be to have delay. For example, you want to take some action, you can say uh, delay 5000, and then serial print, like this. And you don't have this one. This will also will be printed only when 5000 millisecond passes. But the problem for this is, until this time passes, the program will stop here and stuck here all the code, whatever action that you have below this in this area will not be executed. So delay is not a good option if you're uh, working with time and there are other tasks involved. If you don't have anything else to do and the whole code is waiting for this, then it would be very simple and it will be reasonable to use delay. But in many applications, this will not work and it will be problematic. So we will use Melis. This was one example. And here I've connected this push button, which has two pins like this. The left uh, pin is connected to the ground of Arduino. Here we have a ground. And the right pin is connected to pin 2. And here is an example for the push button. First, I've defined using pin mode, pin 2 as an input. And I also put underscore pull up. This will eliminate usage of a resistor. I have a separate video explaining that. The link will be provided below the video. And here, this pen is now ready without a resistor. It accepts when you push the push button, it will uh, be detected. And now, the rest of the code is the same. I have added this line, digital read to. So this is reading pen 2's status, either pressed or not pressed. Remember, this input pull up means it is pulling up the pen 2 this pin 2 with a resistor to positive. So it constantly will have uh, 5 volts from this pin 2 to the Arduino. So Arduino is reading always high, and we read it, and we store the value of whatever is the result into the PB or push button as an integer. So if it is high, it will be 1. If it is low, it will be 0. When the push button is pressed, it will be 0. Now we check if PB is low, low means zero, this two equal means compare this with this. So we are comparing it. If it is true, which means if push button is equal low, then take the action, whatever is between these two parentheses, so this action will take place. This is exactly the same as before, but here this will occur only if push button is pressed. What it means is, if at the beginning somebody pushes the button, it will not take action until 5 seconds passes. After 5 seconds, this event that we have defined as before, 5 seconds is here at the beginning. Until 5 seconds has passed, then we will see this action. Otherwise, this push button, if it is not pressed, the code will not come to execute this. Now, let me run the code. I will just leave it. You see, this is one second, two seconds, three seconds. Now, if I push the push button, 
you will see the action after f 7. Now if I close the serial monitor, monitor and reopen it again, it will reset the time. So I'm pushing the push button, I see 2 seconds, 3 seconds, nothing, 4, and suddenly you see, take action, when I remove my hand, it stops, so let me stop it or maybe disconnect Arduino. So the scrolling stops automatically. So pay attention here, this is 900 milliseconds, 1 second, and as we can see we are at 2 seconds here, 3 seconds. And here, 4, uh, 4,995 milliseconds, so it's almost 5 seconds. When it's 5 seconds, it says take action. Action takes place when push button is pressed and the time is more than 5 seconds. And whatever other task that you have will continuously will be executed. It will not be interrupted. If you found this tutorial helpful, please thumb up. And also click on the subscribe on the right side in the lower corner. I really appreciate it. In this example, we are checking the status of a push button if it has been pressed twice or more. Once it is uh, pushed for the first time, we record the time uh, in the button push variable and then continuously monitor to see if it has been pushed after 5 seconds. For example, at 2, 3 seconds, 4 seconds if it is pressed doesn't matter 4.9 second doesn't matter as soon if it is pressed after five seconds or longer then we can take an action of course you can make it more complicated but this is just simple task so we will check the status of push button uh, if it has been pressed twice or more and here is a third example what we do is in this one that we push the button and we make sure the second push occurs after five seconds when it is after five seconds then we take some action so now at this case doesn't matter when maybe after one hour somebody pushes the first and then the second this push can be signal from a sensor from something i just made this simple but you can do other tasks so first we have defined a variable called button push this is the time when the push button is pressed what we do is we set it at zero initially and then after that as soon as program starts it will never be zero so this is just for our reference i will show you then the rest is the same and here after this line what we check is we check if push button is equal low which means if push button is pressed and and these two ampersand means and this and this must be true both of them so we check if push button with uh, if if button push is equal zero, which means it's the if it is at the initial state, then we uh, save the current millis millisecond at a button pushed variable. So now zero will be replaced with this, and then we say first push at this time, and we print the time that we stored, and that set. So before, if I go for the second section, remember that when the loop continues next time. If bu the button is pressed and if the button is not equal zero, this, this will not be executed. So this will run only once when we save the uh, push button value. Then we check here, uh, the code will check if push button is pressed still and button pushed is bigger than zero, which means it has some value. Then we check here. Uh, we have a variable called difference. What we do is we get the current millisecond, which is always greater because when the time passes, it increases, subtract, uh, subtract the button pushed value from it. And we have a difference between the time that was pushed and the current time. And we check if the difference is greater or equal to the event. Event is the value that we have here is five seconds. Then we take uh, some action which we print, okay, after five seconds, this has been pressed. Here, this, uh, in this case, I'm not um, checking if it has been pressed after six seconds, seven seconds, but for us, it's important that it has to be pressed uh, after five seconds at any time. Of course, you can make it uh, very precise. For example, it can, if it is pressed between five to seven seconds, some action should take place. But for simplicity, I'm just saying if it is pressed after five seconds, 
this action will take place and you can put whatever code you want in this uh, area let me upload the code I'm opening the serial monitor. As you can see, the time is running. Absolutely no difference when I press it. It will be very quick that you saw that it says button pushed. If I press it, nothing happens. You see now, if it was, if it was five seconds, let me disconnect Arduino so the screen stops. Let's go and check the time when I pressed it first. These are the millisecond, 1.6 seconds. So first push at uh, 5,019 milliseconds, 5 seconds and 19 milliseconds, so this was uh, when I pushed it. So if you take 5, 5 plus 5, it should be 10,019. After 10,019, it should have effect, otherwise a push button should not have any effect. And I pressed it so many times. So this is 7, 8,000, 9,000, you see 10,000 and something, I've not pressed it. At 10,168 milliseconds, I pressed it and it shows after five seconds of the first push. And as long as I kept the button pushed, you will see these values and after that I release it. We are going to do the LED blink with different duration on time and off time using millis. We are not going to use the delay. Here we are going to do the blink with on time and off time separate and independent. So you can select on time 5 seconds, off time half a second or whatever you want in between. And we are going to use the millis during the mm, processing time that this goes on and off. The system will not be waiting for other tasks. So all the other tasks can be continued. And if you use the delay and uh, until the time for the delay is expired, all other tasks will be waiting. So the menace is very useful tool to be utilized in this case. Uh, let me explain now the wiring. This is a 330 ohm to 1 kilo ohm resistor that you can put. I put 1 kilo ohm. The larger the resistor, the lower the, lower the intensity of LED. If you want to know exactly to calculate the resistor for an LED, I have another video. The link will be below the video, so you can cal calculate exact resistance for an LED. This pin is connected to pin 3. And from here we have a resistor, and then, then the larger pin is on this side where the wire is, and the shorter pin is on the other side. You can see here that the resistor is connected to this pin, and the shorter pin is on the other side, which will be connected to the ground. And here is a ground pin on Arduino. Let me now explain the code. We are defining a pin for LED. In this case, I've used pin 3. You can use any other pin that you want. And then we are defining on duration and off duration. This is the time which the LED will be on or the LED will be off in terms of millisecond. For example, this is set to be 1000 millisecond or 1 second, and this is 200 millisecond or 0 0.2 seconds, one fifth of a second. And then this is the integer and variable type integer with high. So this is the initial state of a uh, LED. You can change it if you want. So you can change it to low. And then we have this uh, long type variable called remember time this is the time that is used internally do not change this inside the setup we initialize up using pen mode led this is a defi type 3 as an output and then immediately we set the led pen as led state either high or low whatever you set the led will be in that state and inside the loop we check the led state which is true at the beginning it is high we are comparing it using two equal sign we say if it is high do all these tasks you see f is starts from here to here else from here to here and then we check if millis millis is the time when the arduino starts the millisecond count will start here and this is remembering it and we check and subtract remember time remember time is initially zero so which means 
the difference between this and this will be the millis. So if this is 500 minus 0, this will be 500 if it is greater than on time. On time is the time that we set here, the on duration or off duration. So we check it with on duration because this small, it will not do anything. Nothing happens and else will not happen because it is high. The loop will continue, so we, which means it uh, wastes time for this to pass. In the meantime, you can do any other task that you have in here. Between, because the time passes, this time becomes bigger until it, it is equal or greater than on time, which is uh, over a thousand millisecond. Then we change LED state to low. It's just a variable is set to low. And also we remember the current time. This current time, which be at the beginning was zero, now the time when the LED is changed to low, we are remembering it. And because it was high now, this state, this will escape, and the code will come to this line. Here, digital right, LED pin, pin three, and we send the state which is low now. Now the LED will be low. Now, because this is loop, loop comes here and checks if it is high, which is false, so from here to here it will escape, it comes here. Again it checks it like before, millis, remember time, let's say this was 1000 and now it's 1100, it's not greater than off time because off time is 500 or 1000 and it goes next time, third time until it is greater than that, we, then we change the state to high and then remember the, the time that we changed it. So this way we are remembering the time and when uh, the loop reaches here, it sets the new state. Remember, the loop continuously every time comes and sets the LED pin, and it will not have any effect. If it was high, it comes next time and sets it high again, so it will not have any effect, but it happens. So this is the simplest state machine that you can do millis without using the delay, and all other processes that you have here will be executed without a delay. Also, you can move this in here. And comment this out. It will work. But remember, we have repeated the same code twice here. And that was better. But it's up to you, whichever way you want to proceed. And here is a demonstration the time is set on for one second. As you can see, it, it turns on for longer period and off very short. Let's change it and make this three second and make this five second. Good is uploaded now. So it's three seconds on and off is longer, five seconds. Let's change it to 100 millisecond and 500 millisecond off. The code is uploaded. It will be very quick. And uh, I have a lot of other I have videos that I've used this in many uh, instances. The link will be provided. For example, I have a timer, and here in this video. RoboJax Arduino Relay Timer version 1. I have used it to control uh, an AC bulb or something with a relay. And here is the code. Maximum time, minimum time. And let me see, you see here, Millis, remember time, I've used it. So it runs and you can press the push button at any time to reset it or start the relay. The link will be provided for this. Please make sure to subscribe by clicking at the subscribe button in here. Thank you. Thank you for watching the tutorial from Robojax. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, please post it at the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. And don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos.